My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. It's going to be a bit echoey in here. Let's open the window actually so it's not so fucking echoey. And this is uh, my final fucking go at Dell. I can't believe I'm doing it anymore. Uh, people have got a point that it's going on a bit and blah 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 blah. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a video that uh, Dell did. And it might people are going to say, you know, it's just one video. It's not that. Listen to the way the guy tells you. He explains to you what a uh, how a GSX a GSX uh, 600 a Bandit fucking engine. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Suzuki Bandit 600 gearbox works. He's talking about clunking and this and the other. Here's the drill. This is the easiest way for me to explain it to you, so you completely understand what's going on with your your Bandit clutch. And I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it, so that you understand it. I think. With all of us, if we understand the anatomy of something and why it's happening, we worry about it less. We know what's going on. A big loud crunch in your gearbox, that's always going to scare the pants off you. The moron doesn't have a fucking clue what he's talking about. So, <laughs> just, I'll just fucking roll a bit of it. First thing we do, we pull the clutch in. We've got to get it into gear. You pull the clutch in, just imagine you've got two shafts in the gearbox. One's spinning because the engine, the crankshaft, has got a chain on it, the primary chain, and that spins the, the, the initial primary shaft, and that's got cogs on it. So they're spinning. All the time the engine's running, they're spinning. You've then got the ones on the gearbox, and they're stationary because you ain't going anywhere. So basically, there's loads of things he says. The primary chain for your primary drive that goes from your crankshaft to your gearbox is not a primary drive. Now, un unfortunately for this, I do not have the clutch basket, but I can show you countless pictures, and if you've got a bandit, you know he's just talking fucking rubbish. But, you can see here on the crankshaft, as you can see the rods going up and down, if I spin the crankshaft, you can see that gear there. That gear is your primary drive from your crank side. Then your clutch basket goes in here, it's what's missing on this example. This is going to be our gearbox example when I do a fucking plethora of videos on gearboxes. And we can basically drive this with the crank, I need to get the clutch, and so on. I basically pick this up for fuck all. This is why I've got this. But it's just so lucky because he's on about the bike that I fucking have the engine for. But basically our clutch basket goes in here. There is no clearance and I'll bring you in closer to show you. Oh fuck it, I'll just do that now. Now the gear on your clutch basket is fucking massive. It is the exterior gear. It's about fucking year big. And there is no clearance for a chain. There are no chain um, tensioners. There's no chain guide blades. There is nothing. There's no rollers. There's no fuck all because bandits do not have a primary drive chain. Like on most Suzuki models, they do not have a primary drive chain. They drive straight off of the fucking crankshaft via gearing. It's one of the reasons why some people argue they sound a bit clunky and clattery and all the rest of it. Now, he then got, you know, so that's that sorted. So you say, well, yeah, all right, so he's made a fucking mistake about the primary drive. But you've got to remember, it's the way he tells you. Here's the drill. This is the easiest way for me to explain it to you so you completely understand what's going on with your, your bandit clutch. And I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it so that you understand it. I think with all of us, if we understand the anatomy of something, and I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it so that you understand it. I think with all of us, if we understand the anatomy of something... But moving on from that, let's talk about the gearbox. This thing's going to fall over. Let's talk about the gearbox. I'll just play, fuck it, I'll just play it. Firstly, you've got your clutch and your synchros in your gearbox. They're all obviously spinning parts that sometimes you have to hold still so that when you put it in gear, the bike doesn't fire off down the road on its own. So now you've heard him go on and on and on. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. He talks about synchros, that's the first thing he says. These do not have synchro rings in. It is not a synchro, it's not a synchro mesh gearbox. You fucking retard. It's spinning, spinning. You press down on the lever and in it goes. And as it goes in, it goes in and suddenly this one's got to go. All of a sudden, it's a sudden whack and that's your crunch. It's like he's on about lay shafts. This is a constant mesh gearbox. As far as I know, every motorbike that I've ever seen has a constant mesh gearbox. The teeth are constantly meshed together. That is the input shaft. You can't see it from where you are probably. I can't see what you're looking at. Right, you can see the sprocket there. Now this isn't even in gear, look. 
right this isn't in gear that's just the the, the 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 drag between all the rest of it but if i spin that you can see that all these gears even in neutral are connected right this is just how it works it depends what path the drive is going on through the selector forks you're trying to do things to prevent it but you're probably thinking back to front i'll tell you why imagine this shaft is spinning on the engine you want that to spin as slowly as possible because this one's stationary you're asking them to come together and mesh so as they come round, you're asking this one to come in and pick these teeth up and start spinning it. That's allowed to spin by releasing the clutch. So when you pull the clutch in, that releases this shaft and allows it to move by this one. And then it starts to spin, but it's still stationary until it's meshed. This one's spinning. There is no meshing clashing of the gears. Fuck's sake, you would smash your gearbox to pieces in no time if they were just gears coming in and coming in what the fucking hell moves gears into mesh like this there's no sliding action the sliding action comes to the rotational action of your drum and their selector forks what the fuck is he talking about that's the point get those teeth meshed a little bit more positively with your foot get it in don't mess about with it because that will cause it to grind get that clutch freed off so that when the clutch shaft when the lay shaft itself the output shaft is asked to spin, when you require that to spin by meshing that in, the least resistance on that, the less of a crunch you'll get. Obviously, if that's nice and free running, then the minute you get that in, it'll just go smoothly. And this is the thing, not only, he's literally saying, he says, oh, I'm gonna keep on putting clips in and interrupting myself here, but he keeps on saying stuff like, it's easier for us to, it's easier for you to get a handle on if you understand how it works. This is the anatomy of bikes. And then he can, tells you complete Fucking utter rubbish. I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it so that you understand it. I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it so that you understand it. I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it so that you understand it. I want to explain to you very quickly why they do it so that you understand it. He's just making it up. He's describing a car transmission better than he is, you know, basically explaining the anatomy of what is inside here. Move this gear. And that is wonderful. So I have a little bit of an issue. Ah, oh, there we go. Sometimes you've got to pull and push the shaft backwards and forwards. It wasn't seating here properly. So that goes in yon end, lift up, rod in. It's nicely well. So I can hold this still and the shaft spins. The next one are movable gears, which again are stationary shafts or exchanging torque for velocity, for speed, for RPM. Um, so I then watched another video because I was just curious. It goes on about brake you know bleeding brake and hydraulic clutches and all this kind of shit and he says i don't know what fucking brake fluid is it's definitely not hydraulic oil hydraulic brake fluid is hydrosorbic which boring word meaning it absorbs fluid and moisture from the atmosphere it does and i'll show you how it does in a minute because many people have asked questions in the past how can it absorb fluid or water or moisture when it's sealed inside a hydraulic system i'll show you there is a way there are ways you can tell it will drop inside the system. Uh, some detrimental things, one of the most detrimental things with getting moisture in your brake fluid is that moisture is water, water boils. Now brake fluid, for the life of me, I don't know what it's made from. I really don't. For the longest I've been doing stuff like this, it's not an oil because oil is a, is a, is a, is a crude oil distillate and effectively oil would burn. So the red hot brake fluid on the back of the pads when your brakes are doing their hardest that would that would not be good so it's not an oil it's not it's not it's not a spirit because that would catch fire it's certainly not water based because it would just rust it is got some sort of thing it might be silicon based maybe one of you clever boys can tell me but well, well dot 2 was fucking hydraulic oil and i'd love to know because it's quite an old video what he's got in his fucking hand i can't tell if that's dot 2 then yes it is it's actually hydraulic it's actually oil Dot three and all the rest of it, they move to um, glycols. Weirdly enough, <laughs> we're getting into that bullshit again. But um, and then I think it's dot five that's gone to a silicon base. But five point one is a again. I think something weird is five point one. I'm not entirely sure. I have to do research. That's all brand new. But 
it, you know, it's video after video after video after video of him explaining how Evans is super slippery the hotter it gets, or whatever, and he doesn't think that these physical changes happen the same to 50-50, all this fucking rubbish. It's not just about Evans. He's making it up, and you can almost... I'll put clips of the um, hydraulic fluid up when he's talking about what basically what brake fluid is. Yes, he admits he doesn't know what he's talking about, but you can see him making it up. He's definitely not this, and it's not this, and it's not this, but you can see him trying to dream up what he's about to say. For the life of me, I don't know what it's made from. I really don't. As long as I've been doing stuff like this, it's not an oil because oil is a, is a, is a, is a crude oil distillate and effectively oil would burn. So the red hot brake fluid on the back of the pads when your brakes are doing their hardest, that would that would not be good. So it's not an oil. It's not it's not it's not a spirit because that would catch fire. It's certainly not water based because it would just rust. It has got some sort of thing. It might be silicon based. Maybe one of you clever boys can tell me. But fucking annoys the shit out of me because people, you know, I haven't watched all these videos. God fucking, I've probably only watched about one percent of them. Ten percent of them maybe. People keep on sending me clips. He's got a bandit sat there. He goes on about like, I am the bandit man. If you want to know about your bandit, come to me. He's on about fucking gears. Engage. He literally says it. So as they come round, you're asking this one to come in and pick these teeth up and start spinning it. That's allowed to spin by releasing the clutch. So when you pull the clutch in, that releases this shaft and allows it to move where this one, and then it starts to spin. But it's still stationary until it's meshed. This one's spinning. One shaft is staying still, which is your output shaft, which it actually isn't staying still because of how gearboxes actually fucking work. It's just how it's engaged, but that shaft is not staying still. And then he's talking about, he literally says the gears, and they start clicking, clicking, clicking. That grinding noise you hear is your synchro rings in your car. Now you can try and get, you can't, you can't really get that effect in bikes because of the way that your selector mechanism works in your, um, your selector drum works. It basically goes from one position to another. It positively engages from one to the other due to the ramps, due to the springs, due to cam followers, due to anything. Now, the terminology he uses is wrong. What is it explaining is completely fucking wrong. And this is what it is for me. A guy who is constantly wrong, when he is telling you other things that could be dangerous, do you fucking believe the guy? As far as I'm concerned, no. You know what I mean? It's... <sighs> this is what I'm fighting against. You know, people ask me questions all the time. They say, Matt, well, I heard someone say this, and Matt, I heard someone say that. And these guys are faceless because they're on forums. I'm saying, don't listen to them fucking assholes. That's dangerous. That's wrong. That could break your engine. That could do this. That could do that. Don't be a fucking idiot. Half of this is make-believe. I spend half of my time, and it's my time, spending half my time um, answering questions that someone has filled someone else's head with fucking nonsense. Now, we all laugh and all the rest of it when I'm taking the piss out of fucking a company that are making money, you know, I take the piss out of Evans and all the rest of it, we're going to hammer it home to them fuckers because they are robbing us blind. But Dell is doing the same thing, not on the vast scale, but they are a company full of loads of people. Dell is one man and he is basically accepting donations, getting paid by YouTube for being on YouTube for views and all the rest of it because he's fucking monetized things and all the rest of it. He asks for people's Patreon money, so he's getting money out of spouting shit that then I have to, and other people, have to go around fucking disproving and sorting out and all the rest of it. To the point where I have to get the gearbox that he's blabbing on about, that he's got, that he doesn't understand that fucking works. Oh. Yeah, it's just, what he's talking about, he's making it up. And then people flock around that, which is fine. You know what I mean? People flock around Justin Bieber. The guy's a fucking asshole. But that's just my opinion against someone who loves him. You know, that's fine. That's just opinions or whatever. We're not talking about opinions. We're talking about how things actually work, how things function. And the arrogance of the guy, it just puts, pushes me up the wrong way. It pushes me up the wrong way more because I'm correcting his mistakes. You know what I mean? And other people, you know, they say to me, and that, that it also means that I have to put more effort into go to even a further extreme to categorically prove that this is exactly what this is. And sometimes these things are hard to fucking 
um, demonstrate so it's obvious you know when we're talking about talk um, it's a force it's not something you can directly see and it's very hard to measure just look at AVE and how much of a trouble he's having trying to measure talk it is a quite a hard thing to measure because other things bending moments and all sorts of fucking stuff comes into it regardless um, yeah there you have it there's the example it is the engine he's talking about have we got a serial number on this fucker? It's an N721 144305. So if you even want to go and check up and see what fucking engine this belongs to, the actual serial number, um, for what model this belongs to. I think it's a 1998, I think. Um, are you the exact year? I mean, you could easily find out by the numbers. But any road, that's, you know, I'm fucking done with the, the fucking clan now. You know, and I want to stop wasting people's time. It was fun taking the piss out of him, but now it's just getting to the point where we're just getting fucking annoyed. Um, you know, if you know your mates, watch Dell and all the rest of it, send them this fucking video. It's it's all good if they're just watching for entertainment purposes. I watch Dell for entertainment purposes because he's just so full of shit and so fucking full of himself that it's amazing. Um, and it's it's great. It's like a you know, it's like a train crash in slow motion. And um, you know, but just my 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 thing of this is if you know mates and all the rest of watch Dell, it's not to bring them over to here. You don't have to plug this channel at all. I don't. I'm not asking that. What I'm saying to you is just make them understand to take exactly what he says as pure, um, unadulterated entertainment. You know, this is a, basically just look at him as a comedy show. As this is exactly how not to do it because. You know, and people are going to say, yeah, well, he showed me how to fucking change my handlebar grips. Who the f... That's not fucking important. You know what I mean? There are other sources of information you could get that from. He, uh, and, and what goes on inside here, even though he's making out he's an expert, remember, the way he said it, he's, he's saying stuff like, I'm going to explain it, I'm going to make it clear, I'm going to... You know, it, you might not understand, don't worry, listen to me, I'm going to fucking tell you. He hasn't got a fucking clue. The... The um, the extent of the bullshit. He's not even guessing right. Not even anywhere near. <laughs> He's just fucking miles apart. Hope that makes sense. <sighs> Fuck you, Del.